Hello everyone and a warm welcome from the Stay in Touch team. My name is Christine and I'm very excited to welcome you all to today's webinar. Please allow me to introduce you all to James Lee. James is an implementations consultant here at Stay in Touch and he has over 20 years of experience in the hospitality industry. So now, without further ado, James, would you please talk to us a little bit more about the rate manager? Sure. Thank you, Christine. Hi, everyone. As Christine just said, my name is James, and I'd like to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join our seminar today on Rate Manager. Uh, before we dive into our system, I just want to take a few screenshots of what we'll actually be looking at in Rover. Um, when we actually log into our Rate Manager, this is the first screen you're going to see. You notice it says Rate Manager not configured. That's because we haven't selected any filter options. Uh, once we actually dive into the system, you'll notice that once we um, choose our filters, we'll start seeing more data. The next slide is going to actually show us our filter options. We have up here at the top, which is our date range. This is where you're actually going to select the dates that you want to look at. You can also choose a way that you would like your data sorted. Uh, you can sort it by lowest rate, by highest rate, or you can do by alphabetical. And then you can choose what you want to look at. You can look at rates. You can look at rate types, and you can look at it by room types. And then you have additional filter options below at the bottom where you can actually filter by individual rate codes or if you're looking for a specific contracted rates. And right now, this is just screenshots that I'm showing you. We're actually going to dive into the system and actually um, show you how to do this stuff when we get in there. So right now, it's just kind of some screenshots of what we're about to look at. The next screen is going to be um, after you choose your filters, this is what's returned back to you. You notice you have all your rate codes listed on the left side, and you have all your rates kind of in a, uh, in a grid format to the right. Up here at the top, you have your dates, and then you have your um, all rates title bar or title row at the top. And we'll get into that more in just a minute. <clears throat> the next slide kind of gives you an idea of what our restrictions are. Uh, the possible restrictions are all on the left side here. And when we get into actually doing this in Rover, I'll go over each of these restrictions and tell you which one, what, what they all mean. And then our uh, final slide is actually going to be where you're going to adjust rates and you'll be able to see how you can adjust rates by price or by incremental uh, uh, dollar amount increases or decreases. And with that, I'm going to actually bring over Rover. Rate Manager will allow you to actually increase and decrease rates on a daily basis, but for it to start, it needs a starting point, and that starting point rate is actually done in our rate settings. So if I go into our settings area of Rover, and I go into my rates. And for this exercise, I'm going to use my rack rate that I have configured here. And when you go into your rates, you're automatically taken to the screen where it shows your rates for a particular date range. And there are two different areas in rate configuration. There's date range and there are set. Your date ranges are going to be your dates that are your loading rates for. So right now I have two date ranges. I have November 16th through November 22nd, which is an old range. My current range, which is December 28th through December 31st. Uh, if you are ready to load your 2018 rates, you could do, do so by clicking on this new date range here. And that will automatically start off at January 1st, 2018, because we already have rates loaded to the end of 2017. In addition to your date ranges, you have date uh, you have sets, and sets are days of the week, and you can actually set different rates for different days of the week. So right now, for my current rates, I have two different sets. I have Sunday through Thursday, and I also have my weekend rates on Friday and Saturday. So once we get into Rate Manager, you'll see that you're able to modify those rate amounts by adding or subtracting dollar amounts. Setting your rates here gives Rate Manager that starting point for you to work on. So now we're going to actually go into our Rate Manager. Uh, to get there, I'm going to go under Revenue Management, and I'm going to do Rate Manager here at the top. <clears throat> and we have our filter options up here on the left side. As I said earlier, the date range is our dates that we want to look at. So for this, I'm going to actually look at the month of January, and you'll notice my training hotel is not current date. Um, it is uh, just a training environment, so it's set 
still set back in January. Um, on the left side here, this is where your from date is, and then your to date will be on the right side. It will automatically default to go about 30 days out, but I'm just going to switch this over to the end of January. Once I have my date range, I could choose my order by. Uh, here I have, I could show by lowest rate, by highest rate, or by alphabetical. I'm just going to choose to sort it by lowest rate. And then I have three options here uh, for how I want or what I want to actually look at. I could look at rate codes individually. <clears throat> I could also look at rate types. All rate codes must be grouped by rate types, and that's done in configuration of the hotel and of the rate codes. Here you can yield all your rate codes that belong to a particular rate type by just yielding the rate type itself. And from there, you can even drill down to the rate code level and room type level, all in that particular rate type. The other option here you have is room types, and this is going to show all room types that you have in the hotel. And when you update anything for room types, you have to keep in mind that you're going to be updating all rate codes that are attached to that particular room type. And that's actually the first room we're going to do here. <clears throat> so if I choose room types, notice my other filter options have disappeared. That's because if I'm looking at room types, it's just going to show me all my room types. And I could choose to look at different room types from there. So I hit show all. <clears throat> and this is our rate manager grid. You'll notice I have my room types here on the left side. I have my dates listed up here at the top. And I have my column headers up here at the top as well. Now your column headers will actually allow you to make adjustments that are for every single thing under one particular column. So if I click on this blank square under all room types on Wednesday, January 11th, <clears throat> this is going to allow me to set a restriction on all of my room types. And as I said earlier, it's going to be all room types and all rate codes. So essentially, you're going to be doing this for the entire hotel. So this is where we actually set our restrictions. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to kind of go over our restrictions and which one, what they all mean. <clears throat> our first one is closed. This is pretty simple. It just means that you're closed to arrivals. You're not letting anybody stay over this day. You are sold out. You are not taking any reservations for this particular day. Closed to arrival, essentially what this means is that you're not allowing people to arrive on this day. Uh, you can stay on this day, so if it was on the 11th and they were arriving on the 10th, they might be able to stay on the 11th, but they're not allowed to check in on the 11th. Vice versa to that, we have close to departure. This is not going to allow any guests to depart on that particular day. A good example for this would be if you don't want people, you want people staying over the entire weekend, you can put a close to departure on Saturday to ensure that all your reservations are staying that whole weekend. <clears throat> Minimum length of stay, if you're arriving on this particular date, you have to stay a particular number of nights to qualify for this particular <clears throat> uh, room type. Max length of stay is the opposite of that. You're not allowing people to stay more than this amount of days. So you can set up for a max length of five days. Any reservation more than five nights will not be allowed. Minimum stay through. So this one <clears throat> is kind of similar to your minimum length of stay. But the key differences here is this more, is more referring to a stay date. Um, so it ensures that any reservation with a stay date on a particular day has a minimum number of nights. So for example, let's say you have this restriction on May 5th for six nights. This means any reservation with a stay date of May 5th has to be six nights. So they can stay May 3rd as long as they're staying to May 9th. But if they were only departing on May 7th, you would not be able to make a reservation for that time. <clears throat> and then we have minimum advanced booking, which is saying that uh, you have to book this by this date. A uh, good example of this is if you have an early bird special or something like that, uh, you can say, okay, this rate is available only 60 to 90 days out. If it's past 90 days, you would not be able to uh, make this reservation. Vice versa to that, you have max advanced booking. This would be a good example of last minute bookings or hotel tonight, saying that you only allow this rate to be available one day before arrival. So if I set a restriction here, let's say I'm going to set a minimum length of stay, and I could say I could do three nights. Hit set, and I'm going to set. <clears throat> And you'll notice that as I set this restriction, I have a little bubble that pops up. And this little bubble tells me that what kind of a restriction I have and what that restriction is. And we actually have a legend here at the bottom. So you can see 
by just that little light blue square <clears throat> that this is a minimum length of stay and it's a minimum length of stay for three nights. And then I have my other little boxes here as well. Those will all pop up depending on what rate you put. Now, we also have the option, let's say if you wanted to make sure that you wanted to get that weekend business um, for January and February, um, we could actually set a minimum length of stay, and we'll do Friday for two nights. We'll set this, and then we can apply this restriction. We can repeat it. So if I hit apply with restrictions, I can hit every Friday night, and I can do until a date range. So I can say, you know what? All the way into the end of March, I'm going to roll this restriction out. And now you notice that every Friday night, I have a minimum length of stay for two nights. And even though I'm only displaying to the end of January, this is going to roll that restriction out to the end of March because that's where I wanted it, I wanted it to go out that far. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to set a restriction on a particular rate code, um, I can come in here and say, okay, I want my deluxe rooms with King Bed on Monday, January 9th. I need to close those. And I can set that. And that allows me to close out just one particular room type on any particular day. But remember, this is going to be for all rate codes. So everything would not be able to sell a deluxe room with a King Bed on Monday, January 9th. Now, if I wanted for an entire time frame, um, I have two options up here at the top. I have open all and I have close all. If I hit close all, this is going to close out my entire month. Now, this will only close out what you're looking at through our filter, and you have a summary of your filter up here at the top. It tells you that you're looking from January 3rd into January 31st, and you're currently viewing all room types. If you needed to change this filter, you could actually click this little tab here, and this brings back your filter option and you can change what you're actually looking at here. Now, I know some of you revenue managers are having a heart attack looking at your entire month being sold out or uh, closed. We can actually reopen these by clicking this green button, and that's going to open up everything again. <clears throat> Notice our uh, other restrictions as far as minimum length of stay, those will stay in place. If you needed to remove those, you can come here and click on the top uh, column and you would just turn this off, or you would just remove it. There you go. And then you removed your restriction. And this is it for um, setting restrictions. Uh, we're actually going to dive into uh, updating our rates. So from here, I'm actually going to go back to my filter, and I'm going to choose to look at rates. And from here, I have other options available down here below that. Um, I have my filter individual rates. If I click this drop down menu, this will actually show me rate codes and I can pick whichever rate code I want to look at. Um, I also have filter by rate type. So if I wanted to look at my rate, I look at my discount rates, I could come here and this will show me all my discount rates that I have available. <clears throat> so I want to look at everything, I just leave this blank. Below that, you have filter contracted rates. And your contracted rates are going to be your negotiated rates. If you have special rates for a company such as Sprint, or Verizon, Google, et cetera, uh, your contracted rates, you could actually search for those here. <clears throat> now, for this purpose, I'm just going to show all my rates because I want to look at everything. Obviously, there's a lot of information here. And notice all those minimum length of stays that we put are still there for all of our rate codes. <coughs> Excuse me. To the left here, you'll notice that we have our rate codes that are listed. Uh, you'll see Sprint, Verizon, test rate codes, City of Dallas, et cetera. You'll also see some little bubbles here on the left side. Uh, the bubbles that are actually darker color with the letter C in it, that means that this is a contracted rate. Again, these are one of your negotiated rates that you have in your hotel. Uh, to, like under test rate code, you'll see another bubble with a lighter blue color with the letter B. And what this means is that this indicates a base rate or a parent rate. This means that there are other rate codes that are attached to it and are dependent on this particular rate code. And then our dependent rate codes, you can tell those because they're grayed out. Uh, you'll see like Georgetown Inn, uh, AAA, uh, AAA discount, all those are grayed out because they are attached to another rate code. If you come in here and click on one of these dates, say AAA, <coughs> I cannot make any changes to this rate. 
That's because the rate is tied to another rate code, a bar, a base rate. Now, if I wanted to actually change rates, I'm going to find that rate. Um, I can come here, click on a particular date, and this will show me my rates for each room type. But it's not letting me change it. So when I'm ready to change it, I would actually need to click on the rate, and that's going to drill down. It's going to drill down to my room types. And here I can actually change it. And you'll notice there are some rates that are kind of gold color with an asterisk behind it. Um, what that indicates is that this rate has been changed. It is no longer your set rate that you set in configuration. It has been modified. It has been yielded at a different cost. <clears throat> Once I'm ready to change a rate, let's say on Sunday, January 8th, I know I'm going to be pretty busy. I want to go ahead and increase my rate across the board for all my room types by $30. Here I can say okay, not 300. And right now I'm just going to leave tile because I'm not charging for extra tile. I'm not charging for an extra double adult. And then I can set this. And this is going to increase my rate for all room types by $30. And again, all those rates that are dependent on rack rate will be modified as well. Those prices will change. Now, if I wanted to actually set a particular rate for a particular room type, I could do that as well. I could come here and click on the actual room type for that day. So on January 10th, I know my deluxe rooms with king beds are going to be selling like hotcakes. So I can increase that to $3.99. And that's only making the change on that one particular room type. So you have the option, and even if you go to a, a room type by itself, you can still do increase and decrease by increments, or you can actually physically type in the rate. And just like before with our restrictions, if we wanted to say, all right, you know what, every Sunday night, I'm going to increase this by $20. I can hit apply price and I can roll this out to every Sunday night all the way until the end of March. And that will uh, repeat that increase in rate for every Sunday night, excuse me, until the end of March. And that is our rate manager module. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, the seminar today. And Christine, I'll turn it back over to you. So that is going to wrap up today's session. If you guys want to hang tight, we're going to be working on um, preparing this video to be uploaded. So we'll be sharing that shortly. Um, as always, you can always submit questions um, to our help desk. And that URL is available at grandtouch.freshdesk.com. So definitely feel free to create a support request. If you think of anything along the way, we'd be more than happy to respond. Um, hope you all have a great rest of your day, and thanks so much for joining.